Well, one of the most common questions I get, either through email or direct message, is how do I build a boat? Well, I've been giving it a lot of thought recently, and I've come up with three essential elements to building a boat. The first is skill. Second, space. And the third, knowledge. So let's get right into it. Well, the first element in getting started in boat building is skill. Now, what I mean by skill are basic carpentry skills, and only you would be able to assess where your skill level is. So, for example, if you've uh, completed a fairly complex project like uh, building a deck or renovating a house or even building a piece of simple furniture, uh, you definitely have the skills in order to build a boat. Now everybody's skill is going to be a little bit different and the more complex your skill is, the more complex boat you'd be able to build to start with. Most people like to start off with a smaller project. So if your skills, for example, are just simple homeowner kind of skills, but you do understand the properties of wood, then it's probably a good idea to perhaps start with a smaller boat. However, if your skills you think are fairly advanced, that say you've built a more complex piece of furniture out of hardwood, you'd be able to build a bigger boat or a more complicated boat. Essentially, when you're building a boat, what happens is you're going to learn those skills along the way. It's very few people that begin building a boat that understand all of the processes all the way through. So for example, if you've never steam bent a piece of wood, that doesn't mean you can't build a boat that has steam bent frames. When you get to that point, you'll understand how to do it. Now the nice thing about building a boat is that most all of the steps start out fairly simple and get more complicated as the boat build goes. So gaining skill along the way is what you're going to do. Now, if, for example, you say, well, I really don't have all that much experience and I really don't even know how to perhaps build a simple picture frame. If that's the case, then perhaps you might want to take a basic carpentry or woodworking course at, say, a community college and or there are a lot of adult ed things sometimes through high schools. But if you feel like you have this skill and the confidence to do this, you most likely do. Because really what it boils down to is confidence in yourself to be able to handle the tools and to adapt and to solve problems along the way. The next essential element is space. We're not all as fortunate as myself to have this nice big space to work in. However, most of you probably do have enough space to begin building a boat, at least a small boat. So the rule of thumb is if you take the beam of the boat, the width of the boat, plus four feet on each side, that should give you adequate room to work around it. Now a very good beginning boat is a Yankee Tender, and I'll put a link below to the plans for the Yankee Tender. So for example, the Yankee Tender is four foot four inches. So if you add four feet for each side, you're basically talking about 12 feet. So a single stall garage is usually 12 feet by 20 to 24 feet long. So this 12 foot boat will give you plenty of space then at the end of it to set up your tools and a workbench and so forth. Now if you don't have a garage that you can dedicate to building a boat, there are other options. So one option is to build a bow roof structure. And again, I'll put a link below to some plans for a bow roof structure uh, from Stinson Marine. Now, a bow roof structure is where it builds sort of a cathedral looking sort of uh, shape, and it's probably one of the most strong and cost effective ways to build a temporary shelter. So, if you have a little land in the backyard, or you just only have a little space in your garage that you can set up your tools, this would be a really good option. There are lots and lots of YouTube videos on people building these structures. So please feel free to do a little Google on bow shed structures. 
So the other thing is that you could buy a fabric structure. And again, I'll put a link below to a fabric structure. And a fabric structure is a temporary garage that you can put either in your driveway or in the backyard or places like that. And again, a simple one that is the size of a single stall garage is generally a little less than about $500. So those are some options of things where on your space that you can build a boat. Now there are also, if you live in a large city and you only have an apartment, there are a lot of what we call maker spaces. Now I checked around my area for some maker spaces and I came up with a list of about three. And in general, they charge around $45 a month. And a maker space is a space that you share with a lot of other people and you have a dedicated space for yourself, which would be where your boat is, and then you share things like a table saw and a band saw and a lot of other sort of more complex hand tools. So a maker space is actually a really good option for people that live in larger cities. So the next part of space is the tools that you'll need to build a boat. Well, I've put together an assortment of some basic tools that I think you need to get started building a boat. So what we have here is a handsaw, and this is about a 14-point handsaw. Uh, 12 to 14 point would work fine. You need a smoothing plane and a block plane. A square, you need a combination square, and you need a T-bevel gauge. So you can either have one like this is much like most of the ones that you can get in a hardware store, but ideally you would like to have a nice small T-bevel. This is a four inch T-bevel. You need a pair of compass dividers, a couple of wood chisels. This is a one inch chisel and a half inch chisel, a utility knife, an awl, scratch awl, a hammer. And this is a 12 ounce hammer and a couple of screwdrivers, a flathead and a Phillips head screwdriver. Now the basic power tools you need is a cordless drill and a set of drill bits. I have an orbital sander here. Uh, this is a very handy tool and this would be an option but a uh, handheld router. So those are the basic tools you need to get started building your boat. Now the one thing that I did not mention was clamps and the reason being is that you don't need just one particular style of clamp. You need a lot of different types of clamps for different operations. So my advice is you start off with some very basic clamps and as you move along in your boat build you will then discover what style clamp is best suited for that actual operation. And then purchase them as you go. As, as the old saying goes, you never have enough clamps. So in addition to these hand tools, what is the one stationary tool that I would recommend for your shop? And that would be a 14 inch bandsaw. Now with that bandsaw, you can accomplish almost every task you need in order to build a boat. From cutting curves, to resawing, to ripping, to cross cutting, all of those things can be done on a 14 inch bandsaw. So there you have it. Those are the basic tools and space that you need in order to get started building your boat. So now let's explore the last element, knowledge. Knowledge. Where do we get the knowledge to build a boat? Well, you can be like me and you can invest in practically an entire library of boat building books. Or also, as I did, go to a boat building school. And both of those things are quite time consuming in gaining the knowledge to build a boat. So you might think, you know what, I'm just going to go and buy plans for the boat that I want and build it. And lo and behold, you find out that it doesn't come with an instruction manual. So I've had a lot of people contact me and say, Bob, I have these plans and I have absolutely no idea where to get started. They might as well be written in a foreign language. If all of that's confusing to you, I'm offering a free consultation call for anybody that's either starting building a boat or has built a boat and you'd just like to speak to somebody about some of the problems and issues that have arisen in your boat building journey. So there's a link below that you can schedule a talk with me and I'll look forward to speaking with you. 
And I hope this video was informative in helping you get started in boat building. So I'll see you next time on the Art of Boat Building.